Hey, what's up on one for the raw photographers in this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at a few of the effects filters to make this image pop and use some of our creativity to play around and see what we can make. The first thing I'm going to do is try to correct this images perspective or the lens distortion. And I don't even think it actually has too much of a lens distortion because it looks like the depth or the background of the image is curving a little bit so it doesn't look aligned or straight on the horizon but anyways i'll go to the lens correction click on this and just apply it so it is a subtle change let me show you the before and after but you can still see the horizon is not level but that's just due to the background and how the mountains are going from the I guess the z-axis on the depth of field or the depth I should say anyways I'm going to go click on the crop tool I'm going to click on the level tool right here I'm going to click hold and drag to about here just to make this image look better and as you can see it doesn't do anything because it was already leveled so I'll just click on accept here the other thing I can do is also crop this image but I'm just going to keep it in its entirety to show you some of the changes that I'm going to make. You can see some of the leading lines or the leading curves right here and the subject here. These are piles of salt. By the way, I took this photo in the Salar de Uni or the salt flats of Bolivia. So as I was saying, we can crop it to help improve the composition and make the crop, let's say a vertical or portrait orientation. I'm going to leave the crop as is. And the first thing I want to do is correct the exposure here so we can see the black point is not at its blackest point and the white point is not at its whitest point. So I'm going to go to the effects tool right here or the effects panel, click on the add filter, go to curves and this node right here, I'm going to move it to the right to map the input of the black point so we can see it's already moving to the left here on the levels or the histogram and I'm going to do the same thing with the white point and move this node to the left and now we can see the white point has been adjusted so it's not perfect but let's see the before and after so the exposure looks a lot better now the next thing I want to do is adjust the color of the foreground or add a little bit more saturation so what I can do is go to the effects panel again which i'm already at click on add filter click on color adjustment i'm going to select the eyedropper tool and actually i'm going to go to saturation and select the eyedropper tool right here and then i'm going to click hold and drag and move this to the right so i selected the orange hue so i'm just going to increase the saturation all the way to 100 and then move the hue towards red a little bit just like that and let me see if the brightness does anything. So I'm going to decrease the brightness, just make it a little bit more darker in the foreground to about minus 20. Next, I'm going to select the blue hue right here. I'm going to move it towards indigo or turquoise. So that looks good. Let's see the before and after of the color adjustment. So already this image is starting to look good. The next thing I want to do is add more saturation or vibrance to the foreground here. So I'm going to go to the local adjustment. I'll click on add adjustment and I only want to select the foreground. So I'll go to mask AI and I will select the foreground. I'll click on apply and let's see if it works. So it looks like it didn't do nothing or wasn't able to work. So instead what I'll do is go to mask AI. I'll go to sky, I'll click on apply. So I have the mask AI applied here and I'm just going to right click on the thumbnail here and I'm going to click on invert mask to select the foreground. I can also click on this icon here to invert it just like that. So anyways, I'm going to disable or at least hide the mask overlay. So that looks good. And by default, this local adjustments at minus one exposure. So I'll just double click on the exposure panel or slider to reset it. 
and I'll go down and I'll increase the vibrance and the saturation to about that. So now this looks pretty good. So let's take a look at the before and after with the adjustment or the local adjustment of the vibrance and saturation. The other thing I can probably do is add a little bit of contrast to make it pop in the foreground here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of structure. It's very subtle, the structure. So it looks like most of the work has been done by the contrast slider. So that looks good. The other thing is, let me play with the temperature. That does not look good at all. This is an interesting look, this blue look, but I'll just reset the temperature. So this image is starting to look good. The sky is on the darker side, but that's okay. I think I'll like it like that because I want to put more focus in on the foreground. The next thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit more focus to the piles of salt right here. So what I'm going to do is go back to the effects panel, click on add filter. And now I'm going to go to glow. And the preset that I like for the glow is clicking on this more icon right here and go to Orton clean. So you can see this nice glow or dreamy look I have, but I need to apply a mask. So I'll click on here and the mask is white. So I'm going to inverse it just like that. So now it's black. I do need to brush in. So I have the brush selected already here. The size is at 100, feathers at 100. So I'm just going to paint in here. Actually, I got to click on the paint tool right here. And I'm just going to paint in here just like that. And just like that. I can also use the right or left square brackets to decrease or increase the size of the brush, which is common in most photography software. So this transition, even though the feathers at 100, it's still pretty harsh. Let's see the mask overlay here. I'm just going to paint in here. I'm going to double click on the mask here and I'm going to increase the feather to about like that. So I can get a nice transition. Maybe 47 looks good. So now the Glow effect or Orton glow effect looks pretty good. I'm going to decrease the opacity of the glow effect to about 55. Let's see the before and after. So it's a very subtle change. Let me zoom in here right there. And let me show you the before and after of the glow effect. This is the before. This is the after, before and after. So that looks pretty good, but I think I'll bump it up to about 70 actually. So now this image looks really interesting. The one thing we may want to correct is some of the exposure or the darkness on the background in the mountains, but I think I'll just leave it like that. Here's the before and here's the after. Here's the before and after. And that might have something to do with the color adjustment and the local adjustment masking I have here. So what I can do is I can double click on this, click on the mask and maybe increase the feather a little bit like that. Let's see the before and after. It doesn't make a big difference, but it looks like the transition's a little bit better. Let me go back to the mask here and play with this feather. Yeah, I think at 63, it looks a little bit better. There's not as many hard transitions. And let's take a look at the before and after. Yeah, so this image looks pretty good. The mountains look pretty good in terms of exposure and color in the background. And to top off this image, the last thing I can do is I could just add a vignette. So I'll go to the effects panel, click on add filter. Go to vignette and usually I don't play around with these sliders often. I just like these presets or styles. So I'll select subtle right here. So that looks good. Let's see the before and after. So that's it for the final image. I'll show you the final before and after. Here's the before and after. So when you're using on one photo raw, make sure to play around with a lot of these filters. 
It does take some practice and it's okay to make mistakes, but you can get some really cool or creative looks with your image. And as you can see with this before image, it's not as saturated in the foreground, but it looks a lot better now with a little bit of masking and a few filters or effects. Plus this glow effect makes this image look really interesting. And if you guys enjoyed this on one photo raw tutorial, you know what to do. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.